constellation of satellites operated for both civilian and military purposes to help monitor the environment, including the prevention and management of natural disasters. It's an Italian satellite constellation owned by the Italian Space Agency and the Ministry of Defense. And we'll have more on the capabilities of Cosmos SkyMed a bit later in the webcast. And for those of you who have been following along, you'll know that we had to stand down from our first three attempts earlier this week due to unfavor unfavorable weather at the launch site. But however, as you can see on your screen, we've got some great weather and some clear skies. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a no-go on the range at the moment. The Coast Guard uh, is in contact with a cruise liner that is heading towards a no-go zone, and they're working on clearing the area. Uh, so we'll get an update on that in just a few minutes from now. But in the meantime, let's take a moment to get more familiar with the Falcon 9 rocket that you see on your screen. Our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle stands 70 meters tall, which is equivalent to the wingspan of a 747 jet. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle are what we call the first stage. Now, this is the portion of the vehicle that's covered with soot from its previous two Falcon Heavy flights in 2019. Last year, 29 of our 31 launches were flown on flight-proven first stages, or in other words, over 90% of our launches last year were on first stages that had flown before. The first stage's primary role is to accelerate all the way to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines. And then there, it will drop off the second stage, which has the payload attached. Now, the first stage will then make its way back to Earth, where we will attempt to recover it back on land at landing zone one. And there is a beautiful view of landing zone one there with some clear skies again. Now, if you turn your attention to the section above stage one and the black carbon fiber inner stage, you'll see Falcon 9's second stage. About two and a half minutes into flight, these stages will separate from each other, and the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine to carry itself and the Cosmos SkyMed satellite to a polar sun synchronous orbit. The Cosmos SkyMed satellite is safely enclosed inside of the payload fairing, which is that large nose cone structure at the very top of the rocket that you can see there on your screen. The fairing halves we are using today are flight proven and we'll be attempting to recover them again once they make their way back down to Earth. And we are approaching the T minus 12 minute mark until liftoff. The Falcon 9 team began their final checks at T minus two hours and most recently we completed the ground team pull to proceed with propellant load and launch at T minus 38 minutes. Now we begin prop loading at T minus 35 minutes and Falcon 9 is a bi-propellant vehicle. That means that we use two propellants, a fuel and an oxidizer. For Falcon 9, our fuel is a refined form of kerosene, which we call RP1 or rocket propellant one. Our oxidizer is a super chilled liquid oxygen and that's what we call densified LOX. So when it's fully fueled, Falcon 9's first and second stage combine to carry over 1.1 million pounds of propellant and we'll burn through most of that in the eight and a half minutes that it takes to land the stage and get the second stage into its initial orbit. Now currently fuel loading is complete on the second stage while loading continues on first stage until about T minus six minutes. Liquid oxygen is still loading on both first and second stages as we speak. Now with that, the vehicle and the weather look really amazing today. We're still keeping an eye on the range uh, in regard to that cruise liner, and we should have an update here shortly. Now, as mentioned earlier, our mission today is Cosmos SkyMed second generation FM2 for our customer, Talis Alenia Space. The constellation is owned by the Italian Space Agency and Ministry of Defense. The dual purpose network is composed of four identical satellites of the first generation launched in orbit between 2007 and 2010, which will gradually be replaced by the second generation ones, improving efficiency and capability in areas such as nation security and planetary preservation. The first satellite of the second generation was launched in 2019, and today will be the second second generation satellite to launch. To help us better understand the capabilities of the Cosmos SkyMed constellation, here's an explanation from the Italian Space Agency's President and Head of Programs Directorate. The Cosmos SkyMed second generation is a constellation of four satellites equipped with the synthetic aperture payload, able to acquire images 
in any part of the Earth's surface with an unprecedented resolution and image quality. The Cosmos climate satellites, like the optical systems, are able to operate during the night and in presence of clouds. This is thanks to the specific frequency used for the acquisition. The antenna is uh, totally new and it is able to acquire simultaneously images at a very big distance between them and the data acquired contain a lot of new information with respect to the past generation. For the better use of the satellites and the exploitation of data, we have developed a new control center and processing center in Italy. This will enable the development of new science and new services application for the benefit of citizens, institutions and entrepreneurs. Cosmos SkyMed Constellation is not only a very uh, important technical instrument in the field of Earth observation, but is also an important uh, support to the strategy of Italy to international collaboration. Thanks to Cosmos SkyMed over the years and even more in the future with the enlargement of the constellation, we can establish uh, collaboration with other countries to share the use of data provided by the constellation and to enlarge coverage of the planet with other instruments offered by, by partners. I'm talking about so far, for example, Argentina, planet in the future in collaboration with Israel, and so on. Also very important is the fact that we use Cosmos SkyMet as third-party contributor to the Copernicus uh, program of the European Space Agency and the European Union. In this way, we offer important strategic and uh, precious data to collect with our constellation, also to other partners, to other producers of data for the benefit of Europe and uh, the rest of the world. Thales Alenia Space is our customer for tonight's mission, as well as the prime contractor responsible for the entire system. Here are a few words from their CEO, as well as the CEO of Telefazio, which designed and built critical ground and in-orbit support and operations. The launch of Cosmos Second Generation Second Satellite is a cornerstone in the entire Cosmos SkyNet program. The program started in 2007 with the launch of the first satellite of the first generation. Thales Arena Space is the prime contractor, and we are proud to bring to space new systems, architecture, technologies, and operational capabilities. Full polarization of the sensor enables to sense the health with unprecedented performance. Agility of the platform is really important to have new operational modes and ultra fine resolution is extremely important to the planet. Cosmos came in is a key program to monitor our planet, to sustain new services and applications, and to bring information about the evolution of our planet. From Cosmos Canada, the second generation, the response of the lights, the digital assignment, integrated with this support, and maintenance of the information. Right after the launch, we will take care of the injection of the satellite in the final orbit. Through GEOS, our subsidiaries that we have established with the Italian Space Agency, we have in charge the, the, the receiving, the processing, and the distribution of data worldwide. Cosmos Climate Second Generation is a true generational link in technology. Through its performances, we will feed the, our applications and it will be a great contribution for the sustainability of the environment. We are currently at T minus five and a half minutes from liftoff of the Falcon 9 carrying the Cosmos Sky Med satellite, and we're progressing into the final stages of the launch countdown. And again, we are keeping an eye on the range. The Coast Guard is working on clearing out a cruise liner from the no-go zone at the moment. Now, next up, we will see the retraction of the trusted structure next to the vehicle known as the transporter erector, or the TE. Uh, and that is that structure to the left of the vehicle that you see on your screen. 
and in preparation for retraction, the TE clamps will open and then it will begin to pull away from the rocket just slightly. And at T0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. We're just about 30 seconds away from those clamp arms beginning to open on the vehicle. And you can see it just below that fairing on your screen. That's where the clamp arms are on the TE. And the weather today, as you know, the past few days has not been great, but today it is all clear and looks amazing over there at the Cape. You should see the clamp arms begin to open shortly here. And it's very slight, but you can see those clamp arms opening up on your screen. Once these open, then the TE can begin to move away from the vehicle. Now the TE is used to roll Falcon 9 out to the launch pad and it raises it to its vertical launch position. It also routes power, fluids, and communication to both the rocket and the satellite. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. And you may hear uh, the TE referred to as a strong back from the nets. And it's very slight, but you can see the TE moving far, uh, moving away from the vehicle. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish prop loading about a minute apart from each other. First stage should be wrapping up here in a few seconds at T minus three minutes. Stage one locks load is complete. And there's that call out. Stage one locks load complete. Stage two should wrap up at about T minus two minutes. You can see a little bit of white clouds around the vehicle. Now that's created when our propellant oxidizer, that super chilled liquid oxygen, comes in contact with the warmer air around it and con uh, cut condenses the uh, air around it. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside the T minus two second mark, we'll light those Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. And the Cosmos SkyMed satellite continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team still tracking that, uh, the range with the Coast Guard with that cruise liner in the no-go zone. Uh, for, if for that reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time, but weather is still looking amazing over there at the Cape. So with that, we're proceeding into the last couple minutes of the terminal count. Stage two lock load is complete. There's that call out that stage two locks loading is now complete on the second stage that completes loading for both first and second stage. Now you can see some venting there on your screen. That is the clearing of... That's the clearing of the locks line on the transporter erector. And around T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will take over the launch countdown. And the flight computers will begin to execute stored programs to prepare the vehicle for flight. Falcon 9 is in startup. We have Falcon 9 in startup. Hold, hold, hold. Boarding the launch on it. launch director calling the hold. We have a red range for a foul range with a ship in the hazard area. As you just heard, we did have a hold, hold, hold call on the countdown. That is because we had a watch item with the range. Uh, we did have a cruise liner uh, making its way towards the no-go zone. 
uh, that the Coast Guard was unable to clear out uh, in time for T0 today. Um, but again, as we mentioned, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow, so we will try one more time tomorrow. The vehicle is uh, still healthy, the payload is healthy, everything was looking good for an on-time liftoff today, aside from the range. Um, so we will try one more time tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again soon.